Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to Ten House here in Lowell, Manhattan. My name is Edward Kelly. I'm the general president of the International Association of Firefighters. And I'd like to welcome Lieutenant John Leary from FDNY's Ladder 15 for our national anthem. Lieutenant Leary. Detail, hand salute. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star's bangle better yet wave? Oh, the Nice job, thank you, LT. I'd now like to welcome Fire Department of the City of New York Chaplain Monsignor Gigantiello for our invocation. Detail, come. Let us bow our heads and pray. God of all love, joy, and peace, we come together to remember that painful day 20 years ago, the day that changed our lives forever. As we remember and pray for all those who died that day, and all those died who died due to 9-11 illnesses, we also pray for their loved ones that were left behind, their children, spouses, parents, and siblings. May those who died, especially our firefighters, who sacrificed their lives to rescue others, will never be forgotten for their heroic and selfless actions. Lord, help us to never forget what happens when hatred, ignorance, and division enters people's hearts. But help us to remember what happens when love, compassion, and unity are exhibited, as we saw on September 12th, 2011. We thank all firefighters here today, all the members of the IAFF, the UFOA, and the UFA, and all those present here today for helping us to remember our fire heroes. God, you have blessed us over and over with so many gifts, but today we ask for your greatest blessing, your gift of peace. May God bless the, NY, the FDNY, the city of New York, and the United States of America. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Father. The Irish statesman, Sir Edmund Burke, said, the only triumph for evil is for good men to do nothing. All throughout the Bible, we're taught about good versus evil, love versus hate. On a beautiful morning 20 years ago, History will remember an epic battle between the best and the worst of man. 
motivated by hate, a group of men committed atrocities, murdering thousands, motivated by love, Heroes emerged that day to save lives. The passengers that rolled aboard United Flight 93 undoubtedly saved the lives of innocent people. The actions by those taken at the Pentagon compare in every way to the heroics of those in combat and save lives. In my eyes, there was no greater triumph for good over evil than the love in the hearts of the 343 New York City firefighters that descended on the World Trade Center between 8.46 and 10.29 a.m. on September 11, 2001. As a 27-year firefighter, I can say that never was a firefighter's courage personified with their mortality so tangible, seeing those twin towers burning and going anyway. It's courage personified. They were part of the greatest rescue effort in the history of the fire service, saving thousands. The love in their hearts to find a patriotism which united these United States of America like never before. The love in the hearts of the 343 IAFFFDNY members proved that whatever divisions that exist amongst us, when we are attacked, when our way of life is attacked, when our freedom is attacked. We'll die for each other. Hate, in all its vicious form, can never defeat the beauty and courage that is mustered from love. God bless our 343 and the 257 that have succumbed to their service at the World Trade Center. We will never ever forget our fallen. I'd now like to welcome the president of the Uniform Firefighters Association of New York City, Andrew Ansbro. Thank you, Enzo. Thank you, everyone, who stopped by to hear our ceremony today as we honor the events of 20 years ago. On this day, September 11th, well, September 10th, 2021, the UFA remembers those 343 heroes that we lost 20 years ago. They were all true friends, and many were sons, fathers, brothers, and cousins. They all left behind family members that will forever be on our hearts and our minds. New York City firefighters will always remember the moment the rigs with their brothers pulled out of quarters and raced to the World Trade Center and answered the call that day never to return. We will always remember the last time we saw them, as will their families remember them the last time they parted. We will always remember the months we spent searching for you to bring you home to your families. Our members gave everything they had that day, and in the days, weeks, and months that followed, we gave more. In the last 20 years that have passed, we have lost another 257 more members after NY illnesses and cancers while working at Ground Zero. We will always remember you. We will always remember the 23 members of the NYPD and the 37 members of the Port Authority Police Department that laid down their lives so that others may live. We will always remember all the victims of the 9-11 attacks here in New York, but also in Pennsylvania, Washington, D.C., and those on the plains, and all those that have suffered and died in the years that have followed. We will also remember the light that came from the darkness the day the world stood with New York City, the day everyone cried with us and stood with us and supported us. We will remember the firefighters, police officers, military members, and everyone that flocked to New York to help us find our fallen, stand with us at our funerals, and support us as we recover from that fateful day. And we'll be eternally grateful. We will never forget. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Nice job. I'd now like to welcome the president of the Uniform Fire Officers Association of the City of New York, Jim McCarthy.
Thank you, Ed. So, welcome everybody, the executive boards and uh, our visitors. Um, as we commemorate the 20th anniversary of September 11th, 2001, we lay these wreaths on this hollowed ground, blessed with the blood of those that sacrificed their lives here. On that day, hundreds of firefighters responded to the, the call. There was uh, an attack on the United States. People came from their firehouses on the rigs. People came from home in their personal cars. People ran through the tunnels with their gear to get here to rescue people. And that was the most important thing. Thousands of people were rescued. As uh, Edzo pointed out, this was the greatest rescue effort in the history of the country. Saved thousands of people's lives. But uh, the members of the fire department take a sacred oath, which they take very seriously, to save life and property. And that's what they did to the best of their efforts on that day. Unfortunately, almost 3,000 people were killed in the collapse of the Trade Center. Among that 3,000 was the 343 members of the FDNY, members of the PAPD, and the uh, New York PD. But our members, uh, thousands of our members responded down that day and in the days after, trying to recover or rescue or find survivors. When there were no survivors, we dug to bring people home so that their families could have mourn them and bury them. We did our best to bring everybody home uh, so they can get a proper burial. There was a lot of heroic acts that day. As I mentioned before, one of my friends, Lieutenant Guja, came in from home. He was killed right in front of here, in front of 10 and 10. Pete Beerfield was at the medical office. He was injured. He came over here, borrowed gear from this firehouse, left a note uh, for the uh, people that find it that left his name Tell, to tell his family that he loved them and that he would be back later with the gear. Father Judge responded from 31st Street as the chaplain of the FDNY, made his way down here, and he was killed. He died early in the operation. Captain Jay Jonas, Ladder 6, his members were saving people in the stairwell, got caught in the collapse, yet he survived, and the members that came and responded here got him out. The heroic efforts, many unnoticed, many unrecorded from our members is just a regular part of our day. This is what we do. We promise to save lives and property, and that's what we've done. So we're here to commemorate the 20th anniversary of uh, September 11, 2001, but it, it's a day that marks the calendar, but we remember it every day. Every day we talk about and think about our members that die in the line of duty. We have a blast, brass plaque in every firehouse with their name and box number. Everybody knows their story, even the new recruits. So we continue to remember. We also have over 253 members that have died from Trade Center related illnesses. We worked on the uh, pile here for months and months, 24 hours around the clock, digging, trying to bring remains back. Exposed to the smoke and the toxins, Many of our members got sick. 243 people passed because of illnesses. We have over 3,000 members of the FDNY registered with Trade Center illnesses right now. It's an ongoing problem and something we're dealing with every day. We attend funerals still for the results of the September 11th attacks. We also mentioned a phrase that comes up often is never forget. You hear never forget it's a hashtag and it's a lot of uh, um, bumper stickers. Never forget is not a slogan for us. Never forget is a way of life. That's what we do. We don't forget. We remember our fallen. And again, we're, that's why we're here laying these wreaths on this hollow ground so that we all remember, just like the FDNY does, remembering our fallen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jimmy. Would now like to invite you all to join our three unions as we lay wreaths at the South Reflecting Pool. Thank you. Eternal rest grant them to them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. May their souls and the souls of all the faithfully departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. <laughs>